O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke The Pardon of the Sinful Woman A Pharisee invited him to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who was touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Master, say on, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor, one owed five hundred days' wages and the other owed fifty. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, You have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, hence, she has shown great love but the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you, go in peace. Comments from the Church Fathers St. Bede Since it was said above, all the people who heard him, even the publicans, justified God by receiving baptism from John, the same evangelist now reinforces with deeds what he had presented in words, that is, the justification of wisdom on the part of the just and penitent, at the moment when he says, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. St. Gregory of Nyssa This account is full of precious instruction. For there are very many who justify themselves, being puffed up with the dreamings of an idle fancy, who before the time of judgment comes, separate themselves as lambs from the herds, not willing even to join in eating with the many, and hardly with those who go not to extremes, but keep the middle path in life. St. Luke, the physician of souls rather than of bodies, represents therefore our Lord and Savior most mercifully visiting others, as it follows, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table, not to contract any of his vices, but to share his own righteousness with him. St. Cyril. A woman of corrupt life, but testifying her faithful affection, comes to Christ, as having power to release her from every fault, and to grant her pardon for the crime she had committed, it follows, now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment. St. Bede. Alabaster is a kind of white marble tinted with different colors. It is usually extracted to make containers of ointments, because, according to them, they preserve them without danger of corruption. St. Gregory the Great, in Evangelia, Homily 33 This woman, after seeing the stains of her vileness, ran to the fountain of mercy to be washed. She was not ashamed in front of his guests because, ashamed of herself much more seriously on the inside, 
she did not believe there was anything to embarrass her any more on the outside. See how much pain this woman burned who was not shy about crying in the middle of a banquet. St. Gregory of Nyssa In recognition of her unworthiness, she stood on the back of Jesus, with her eyes turned downward and her hair down, hugging his feet and bathing them with tears, by her gestures she showed the sorrow of her soul, imploring forgiveness. In fact, it continues, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. St. Gregory the Great She had wished with her eyes for earthly things, but now she wept to punish them. She had arranged her hair to highlight her face, but now with her hair she wiped her tears, therefore it continues, then she wiped them with her hair. Through the mouth he had manifested his pride, but now, kissing the Lord's feet, he impressed it on the Redeemer's wake, so it continues, he kissed his feet. She had applied balm to herself to sweeten the smell of her flesh, but what she had flaunted on her body with clumsiness, she now offered to God with praise, so it follows, and anointed them with the ointment. Therefore, how many pleasures and amusements she had had for herself, so many sacrifices of herself she now encountered. She converted the number of crimes into a number of virtues, in order to offer to God in penance all with which she had offended God in sin. Thus the harlot became more honorable than the virgins themselves, for after repentance was kindled in her, she set her on fire in the love of Christ. Now all these things were manifest on the outside, those that were unfolding in his soul were much more ardent, and only God saw them. On the other hand, when the Pharisee sees these things, he despises the woman, and condemns not only her for being a sinner, but also Jesus for welcoming her. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Behold the Pharisee, truly proud and falsely just, rebuking a sick woman for her illness, and the doctor for help, that same woman, if she had come to his feet, would have been kicked back. This man believed that the sin of others would defile him, and it was because he was not filled with true righteousness. In the same way, some priests, if they perform outwardly some acts of justice, however small, look with contempt upon the persons entrusted to them, and disdain all sinners among the people. On the contrary, it is necessary that when we see a sinner, we should rather deplore ourselves for his misfortune, either because we have already fallen into similar sins, or because we may fall. We must discern very carefully the severity we owe to vices and the compassion we owe to one's nature. For if the sinner is to be punished, his neighbor is to be encouraged, and when he already applies the punishment of his sins by his own penance, he is our neighbor, no longer a sinner, because he already punishes what divine justice has condemned. Soon, the doctor was between two sick people, but one in the midst of fever retained his senses, while the other had lost his senses of spirit. She wept over what she had committed, the Pharisee, in turn, proud of his false justice, exaggerated the strength of his own health. Titus Bostrensis The Lord, not by listening to his words, but by penetrating his thoughts, presents himself as Lord of the prophets, as it follows, Then Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas this speech responds to the thought of the Pharisee, whose words our Lord call attention, hence it is said next, he said, Master, say on. St. Gregory the Great He then gives him the parable of the two debtors, in which one owes less, the other more, and it continues, two people were in debt to a certain creditor, one owed five hundred days wages and the other owed fifty. Titus Bostrensis it is as if to say, you are not free from debt either, and what does it matter to you if your debts are smaller? Do not be arrogant, for you also need forgiveness. That is why, then, speaking of forgiveness, he adds, since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas For no one can on his own account free himself from the debt of sin, unless by divine grace he obtains pardon. St. Gregory the Great, in Evangelia, Homily 33. Having then forgiven the debt of both, he asks the Pharisee who loved the debt pardon more, he says, which of them will love him more, words to which the former replied without batting an eyelid, the one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. 
And here we must remark, that while the Pharisee is convicted upon his own grounds, the madman carries the rope by which he will be bound, as it follows, then Jesus says to him, You have judged rightly. The good deeds of the sinful woman are enumerated to him, and the evils of the pretended righteous, as it follows, then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. St. Ambrose It is as if to say, offering water is easy, it is not easy to shed tears, you did not offer what was at hand, she poured out what was not, when she washed my feet with tears, she washed away her own stains, when she wiped them with her hair, she soaked in my sacred drops of sweat, and if before with her hair she hunted young men to drag them into sin, now with her hair she hunted for herself holiness. St. John Chrysostom, in Matthew, Homily 6 Just as after violent rain the sky becomes serene, so, after many tears have been shed, tranquility arises in the soul and the fog of guilt disappears, and just as by water and the Spirit, so also by tears and confession we are cleansed. And it follows, so I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, hence, she has shown great love. For those who have violently plunged into evil, will in time also eagerly follow after good, being conscious to what debts they have made themselves responsible. St. Gregory the Great The more than the heart of the sinner is burned up by the great fire of charity, so much the more is the rust of sin consumed. Titus Bostrensis But it more frequently happens that he who has sinned much is purified by confession, but he who has sinned little, refuses from pride to come to be healed thereby. Hence it follows, but the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. St. John Chrysostom, in Matthew, Homily 38 We have need then of a fervent spirit, for nothing hinders a man from becoming great. Let then no sinner despair, no virtuous man fall asleep, neither let the one be self-confident, for often the harlot shall go before him, nor the other distrustful, for he may even surpass the foremost. Hence it is also here added, he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. St. Gregory the Great this is how she who had come sick to the doctor was healed, but to some her health became the cause of sickness, so it follows, and the guests began to say among themselves, Who is this that even forgives sins? The heavenly physician, however, does not turn his eyes to them, knowing that such men when medicated get worse, the one he healed, but he strengthens by his words of mercy, so it follows, but Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has made you whole, go in peace because she did not doubt that she could receive what she asked for. Theophylact of Ocrid But after having forgiven her sins, he stops not at the forgiveness of sins, but adds good works, as it follows, Go in peace, i.e. in righteousness, for righteousness is the reconciliation of man to God, as sin is the enmity between God and man, as if he said, Do everything that leads to the peace of God. St. Ambrose this passage seems to disconcert many commentators, and leave them in doubt whether the evangelists disagree among themselves as to the nature of faith. Greek Expositor For since the four evangelists relate that Christ was anointed with ointment by a woman, I think that there were three women, differing according to the quality of each, their mode of action, and the difference of times. John, for example, relates that Mary, the sister of Lazarus, six days before the Passover, anointed the feet of Jesus in her own house, but Matthew, after that the Lord had said, You know that after two days will be the Passover, adds, that in Bethany, at the house of Simon the leper, a woman poured ointment upon the head of our Lord, but did not anoint his feet as Mary. Mark also says the same as Matthew, but Luke gives the account not near the time of the Passover, but in the middle of the Gospel. Chrysostom explains it that there were two different women, one indeed who was described in John, another who was mentioned by the three. St. Ambrose Matthew has introduced this woman as pouring ointment upon the head of Christ, and was therefore unwilling to call her a sinner, for the sinner, according to Luke, poured ointment upon the feet of Christ. She cannot then be the same, lest the evangelists should seem to be at variance with one another.
the difficulty may be also solved by the difference of merit and of time, so that the former woman may have been yet a sinner, the latter now more perfect. St. Augustine, De Consensu Evangelist Arum 2, 39. For I think we must understand that the same Mary did this twice, once indeed as Luke has related, when at first coming with humility and weeping, she was thought worthy to receive forgiveness of sins. Hence John, when he began to speak of the resurrection of Lazarus, before he came to Bethany, says, But it was Mary who anointed our Lord with ointment, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Mary therefore had already done this, but what she again did in Bethany is another occurrence, which belongs not to the relation of Luke, but is equally told by the other three. St. Gregory the Great, Homily 33, in Evangelia. In a mystical sense, the Pharisee, who presumes his false righteousness, represents the Jewish people, while the woman who, although a sinner, approaches the Lord's feet weeping, represents the Gentile converts. St. Ambrose, in Lucum 1, 3. Or, the leper, is the prince of this world, the house of Simon the leper, is the earth. The Lord therefore descended from the higher parts to this earth, for this woman could not have been healed, who bears the figure of a soul or the church, had not Christ come upon earth. But rightly does she receive the figure of a sinner, for Christ also took the form of a sinner. If then you make your soul approach in faith to God, it not with foul and shameful sins, but piously obeying the word of God, and in the confidence of unspotted purity, ascends to the very head of Christ. But the head of Christ is God. But let him who holds not the head of Christ, hold the feet, the sinner at the feet, the just at the head, nevertheless she also who sinned, has ointment. St. Gregory the Great, Homily 33, in Evangelia. What else is expressed by the ointment, but the sweet savor of a good report? If then we do good works by which we may sprinkle the church with the sweet odor of a good report, what else do we but pour ointment upon the body of our Lord? But the woman stood by his feet, for we stood over against the feet of the Lord, when yet in our sins we resisted his ways. But if we are converted from our sins to true repentance, we now again stand by his feet, for we follow his footsteps whom we before opposed. St. Ambrose. Bring you also repentance after sin. Wherever you hear the name of Christ, speed thither, into whatever house you know that Jesus has entered, thither hasten, when you find wisdom, when you find justice sitting in any inner chamber, run to its feet, that is, seek even the lowest part of wisdom, confess your sins with tears. Perhaps Christ washed not his own feet, that we might wash them with our tears. Bless tears, which can not only wash away our own sin, but also water the footsteps of the heavenly word, that his goings may abound in us. Bless tears, in which there is not only the redemption of sinners, but the refreshing of the righteous. St. Gregory the Great. For we water the feet of our Lord with tears if we are moved with compassion to any even the lowest members of our Lord. We wipe our Lord's feet with our hair, when we show pity to his saints, with whom we suffer in love, by the sacrifice of those things with which we abound. St. Ambrose. Throw about your hair, scatter before him all the graces of your body. The hair is not to be despised which can wash the feet of Christ. St. Gregory the Great. The woman kisses the feet which she has wiped. This also we fully do when we ardently love those whom we maintain by our bounty. By the feet also may be understood tile mystery itself of the Incarnation. We then kiss the feet of the Redeemer when we love with our whole heart the mystery of the Incarnation. We anoint the feet with ointment, when we proclaim the power of His humanity with the good tidings of holy eloquence. But this also the Pharisee sees and grudges, for when the Jewish people perceives that the Gentiles preach God, it consumes away by its own malice. But the Pharisee is thus repulsed, that as it were through him that false people might be made manifest, for in truth that unbelieving people never offered to the Lord even those things which were without them, but the Gentiles being converted, poured forth not only their substance but their blood. Hence he says to the Pharisee, You gave me no water for my feet but she has washed my feet with her tears, for water is without us, the moisture of tears is within us. That unfaithful people also gave no kiss to the Lord, for it was unwilling to embrace him from love whom it obeyed from fear, for the kiss is the sign of love, 
but the Gentiles being called cease not to kiss the feet of their Redeemer, for they ever breathe in His love. St. Ambrose But she is of no slight merit of whom it is said, from the time that she entered has not ceased to kiss my feet, so that soon knew not to speak aught but wisdom, to love aught but justice, to touch aught but chastity, to kiss aught but modesty. St. Gregory the Great, Homily 33, in Evangelia. But it is said to the Pharisee, My head with oil you did not anoint, for the very power even of divinity on which the Jewish people profess to believe, he neglects to celebrate with due praise. But she has anointed my feet with ointment. For while the Gentile people believed the mystery of his incarnation, it proclaimed also his lowest powers with the highest praise. St. Ambrose Blessed is he even who can anoint with oil the feet of Christ, but more blessed is he who anoints with ointment, for the essence of many flowers blended into one, scatters the sweets of various odors. And perhaps no other than the church alone can bring that ointment which has innumerable flowers of different perfumes, and therefore no one can love so much as she who loves in many individuals. But in the Pharisee's house, that is, in the house of the law and the prophets, not the Pharisee, but the church is justified. For the Pharisee believed not, the church believed. The law is no mystery by which secret faults are cleansed, and therefore that which is wanting in the law is made up in the gospel. But the two debtors are the two nations who are responsible for payment to the usurer of the heavenly treasury. But we do not owe to this usurer material money, but the balance of our good deeds, the coin of our virtues, the merits of which are estimated by the weight of sorrow, the stamp of righteousness, the sound of confession. But that denarius is of no slight value on which the image of the king is found. Woe to me if I shall not have what I received! Or because there is hardly any one who can pay the whole debt to the usurer, woe to me if I shall not seek the debt to be forgiven me! But what nation is it that owes most, if not we to whom most is lent? To them were entrusted the oracles of God, to us is entrusted the virgin's offspring, Emmanuel, i.e., God with us, the cross of our Lord, his death. His resurrection. It cannot then be doubted that he owes most who receives most. Among men he perhaps offends most who is most in debt. By the mercy of the Lord the case is reversed, so that he loves most who owes most, if so be that he obtains grace. And therefore since there is nothing which we can worthily return to the Lord, woe be to me also if I shall not have loved. Let us then offer our love for the debt, for he loves most to whom most is given. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Amen.